Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today on uh, a uh, special Katana webinar where we've been joined by Intuit. And we're going to be talking through transitioning from QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Online. Um, it's just 12 o'clock now, so we'll just, uh, or for me, it's 12 o'clock. We've got people joining us probably from all over the world. We have over 100 people registered for the webinar today. So we'll just wait a moment uh, to give everyone a chance to, to log in, get used to uh, the uh, LiveStorm uh, webinar app that we're using today. Um, and just to walk through some of the areas within the LiveStorm uh, application, on the bottom right-hand corner, there is a chat button. So feel free to put um, comments into the chat. Uh, I'll open it up here, see if there's any questions. Um, and then also, oh, I'm on a, okay. And also there's a questions button as well, and we'll be monitoring that, but we will have questions at the end uh, for the show or for the webinar. All right, um, why don't we just wait one more second? We've got uh, quite a few people logged in from all over the world, which is pretty cool, and a bunch of different companies. Some of our existing partners as well, so thanks a lot for joining us. Really appreciate it. All right, so I think we can get going here. We're uh, a couple minutes past the hour, and uh, uh, hi, I'm Sean Coltis. Today we're gonna be talking through QuickBooks Desktop and transitioning to QuickBooks Online, and how Katana can help support that for companies that have advanced inventory management requirements or our manufacturers. So I'm the head of channel partnerships at Katana. I've been in manufacturing for the past 15 years. I started out at a manufacturer. Uh, I worked there for three years, a, a molding and millwork uh, facility, and then transitioned into um, manufacturing technology, focusing on ERP technology. And sort of have been a part of the transition from desktop to online and have sort of seen that evolution. And really excited to talk through that today. And I'll turn it over to Leah. Hi, thanks for having me today, Sean. My name's Leah. I am a principal professional services consultant here at Intuit. Been with the company for over 11 years now. I actually started in tech support. So I learned a lot of my online ecosystem language through working with the product on the back end and dealing with technical type issues, you know, QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Payments, online payroll, all the good stuff. Um, so I started working specifically with accounting firms in 2014 um, on the technical side and then moved into sales about, gosh, six or seven years ago. So, uh, so I've got a lot of uh, working knowledge uh, around the product and I'm hope hopefully here today, if you guys have any questions, I can answer them on the fly. And I'm um, super excited to kind of go through uh, this webinar with you guys. Yeah, really excited to have your experience uh, with us today and sort of from the ground floor, right? Answering and, and dealing with very technical detailed questions and then moving into more of the, the sales uh, role. So really cool to have you with us today. Thanks a lot for joining us. Absolutely. And I'm in Arizona, so it's oh. we had a hard freeze warning this morning, which is, you know, we're we're a big bunch of babies out here, so <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> yeah, I'm up in uh, Toronto, uh, Canada, and uh, it's been unseasonably warm this entire uh, winter, oh. and it actually was uh, in Celsius, it was like plus 15 yesterday, which is which is kind of wild for February. It may have been warmer here than it was in Arizona, which probably is probably. <laughs> mind blowing. <laughs> All right, well, uh, today we've got a, a fun uh, conversation and I think it'll be quite interesting where we're gonna talk through for the first 30 minutes, we'll be talking through the core differences between QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online. Then we'll dive into why businesses are choosing to move to the cloud and what some of the benefits are in that and what are they challenged with today in being in an on-premise environment and then how does katana help support that transition from quickbooks desktop to quickbooks online and what do we help provide from a functional perspective to enable companies to adopt the solution then after that we'll actually dive into a demonstration of the product so we'll have a, approximately a 10 minute overview of some of the highlights of katana and then talk through the integration and how that works with quickbooks online and then we'll open it up uh, for 15 minutes uh, Q&A, uh, where we hope people can put their questions into 
uh, the chat and I'll monitor that and uh, hopefully we can answer those as we go through. All right, so I'll turn it over to Leah and we can uh, chat through what are some of the key differences between QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online? Awesome, thanks, John. And this might look overwhelming for just a second, but uh, really what we wanna talk about today is the, the top two, um, we'll get to the next slide here in just a second. We'll, we're really looking at the differences between working in a desktop product versus working in an online ecosystem. And um, there's a lot of different uh, differentiations and um, it's not just cloud versus desktop anymore. Really what we're trying to do is, is Intuit is trying to get folks to understand that in order to collaborate better with your customers, in order to work with them across the country, it's no longer a localized you know, type of business. You can do it all over the world if you choose. And so, um, but really what we wanna focus more so on is our reactive mindset versus our real-time mindset. So one thing just to kind of think about from a mindset perspective, if I am an accountant working with QuickBooks desktop clients and it's tax time, we know that uh, tax season is here. A lot of the times what happens is folks will get that QuickBooks desktop file at the end of the year. And so accountants are having to do a lot of that upload uh, front work for a lot of the clients all at one time. So extensions could happen if mistakes are, you know, not completed within a, 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 a functional amount of time, <laughs> uh, you know, then you guys are kind of like loading up on, on that time up front. And there's always this like could have, should have, would have type of mindset, right? There's nothing you can change because the, the year is already gone. The past has already been done. And so uh, when we talk about working in an online ecosystem, it's like your Facebook, your Instagram, any app you have on your cell phone, you log in and it's real time mindset. Hey, I can work with you on this particular reporting or let's see how we can optimize your inventory and, and, and be able to kind of make sure that we can effectively be you know, a, a good business and things like that. And so um, there's a lot of differentiations and I'm here to tell you right now, a lot of the times I get this idea of like, well, QuickBooks Online should look like QuickBooks Desktop. And I'm here to tell you, they don't look the same and they will never look the same. Um, one being, one is cloud ready. Uh, could you imagine trying to like access QuickBooks Desktop on your cell phone? I probably would fat finger every time the little <laughs> buttons on the map, right? Like I wouldn't totally. be able to actually access that and then um it's a different generation we 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 kind of started that in the cloud and so it's going to look a little bit different i like to always say they're sisters they're not twins um and you know we get a lot of objections around the differences between those two but those are the big ones right thinking of backwards looking in time versus forward looking in time and that's really what we're trying to focus on when we speak to the cloud yeah, I was just going to say, I think the real time aspect is really brought forward also within Katana and allowing businesses to make decisions based on what's actually happening in the business at that moment in time. And I was just thinking of a story. I was working with um, one of our partners, proven CFO, the CEO of the company said he remembers when a client um, used to mail their copy in a floppy disk or not a floppy disk, a um, USB port. He used to mail that to them and they could do their taxes. Um, so. I mean, you know, the accessibility aspect, right? <laughs> and and trying to manage a business, provide value to it. Uh, if you're communicating via mail, uh, I, can't, I can't see that being too real time. Yeah, and gosh, like what if it gets lost in the mail? Like when that was their only copy, that, that can't be good. And I'm not to say I'm not sitting here saying that like that's everyone's um, you know workflow, no, but uh, we do hear some pretty funky stuff, <laughs> some pretty funky stuff working in this business. And so, how do we streamline? How can we make this effective for you? Right? We have the tools and resources on Intuit side, and now Katana can come in and kind of help with that specialized industry. Um, but why would a manufacturing business adopt cloud technology? There's a lot of different reasons why. Um, one thing that I wanna just kind of go through is just some of these highlights that I have here on the screen, but ultimately at the end of the day, we talk about being device and operating system OS agnostic uh, with QuickBooks desktop. And I'm, I'm gonna do a lot of comparisons between the two. So hopefully you guys are familiar with the desktop product, um, but they're not the same if you were to work on a Windows computer versus a Mac. Um, and I'm, as far as I'm concerned, Mac, you know, there's a very small group of people who love QuickBooks desktop for Mac, but it's not like a huge following, um, but it's very, 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 very different. 
And so whether you're on your cell phone, your tablet, your computer, you log into QBO and it's the same across the board. Nothing changes. Um, maybe except when you're on a smaller screen, things are a little bit more truncated, but it's all the same. Uh, there is no needing to have to teach your client something different versus what you know. Um, access anytime, anywhere, right? We've already talked a little bit about this already. Think of it like Facebook. If you have internet access, you can access QuickBooks Online. Nobody wants to work on vacation. However, if there's an emergency that happens, how cool would it be if while you're on the beach, you know, at the beach with your family, working, you know, doing your thing and you have to send an invoice really quick, you could simply just log in on your cell phone and do that and get back to doing what you love. I actually have a really good friend. Um, he's pretty much my dad. Um, he owns a, a garage door company here in Tucson, Arizona, and they use QuickBooks desktop. Um, and I've been trying to get them to move to the cloud, but of course, you know, if they don't want to, I respect that. Um, but one thing that did happen, I was work, I was uh, having lunch with his daughter because um, we're good friends, and um, one of their service technicians needed an invoice, and so she had to leave, and she wasn't able to come back because it was kind of far. Uh, and so she had to go to the location where the desktop file was, send the invoice, and and then we had to reschedule our our lunch. So things like that happen. Um, but it'd be so much easier to just do it on your phone. Be like, hey, I need two minutes. Boom, done. Um, so I love telling that story. So, um, it's also secure. I get this so much. A lot of people are really hesitant to move to the cloud because they think it's not secure and that's 100% not the case. So one thing to think about when working in a desktop environment, it is your responsibility or whomever is hosting the, the, the desktop file, whomever it is, whether it's the server, the accountants hosting it, the customer, it is up to you to be responsible for that firewall protection. And if, you know, uh, there's hacking or if, you know, someone, you know, takes control over a file and things like that, there's only so much Intuit can do because it's your data. Um, but the good news with the cloud, we take that on for you and we actually use bank level encryption. Uh, so your, your, your data is definitely secure. Um, and it's the same level of if you were using online banking. So if you log into your bank's website and you're looking at your stuff there or you're paying bills online, it's the same thing. There is no difference to that. And you're paying that monthly fee or your client's paying that monthly fee and that's included in that. There is no additional cost for that type of security. Automatic backups makes it super easy so that you don't have to worry about once you save that, that transaction in QBO, it's there to stay. There's nothing else to worry about. <clears throat> In addition to that, when we talk about less IT headaches, I think about this in two customer perspectives. The first customer perspective is like a new customer to QuickBooks Online, new customer being they've never used QuickBooks Desktop before. And purchasing a server or purchasing a computer that needs to be used in order to work with QuickBooks Desktop can be pricey upfront. A lot of the times we already have iPhones, we already have iPads. They could just use what they have now with QBO to get started up and running and it makes it super easy from like a, a, a startup cost, right? You can't use a Chromebook for desktop. You gotta use something a little bit, a little bit heavier, heavy duty than that. Um, but on the flip side, I know we have existing customers, customers that are already well, you know, integrated with QuickBooks Desktop. They've been there for a long time, but servers expire, right? It, they have to upgrade eventually at some point. Computers are not forever. And so it's at that point, it would be a great conversation to have with somebody, hey, what would be the opportunities of moving from desktop to online? Like, what are the cost uh, uh, efficiencies if we were to do that? Um, and, and instead of having to maybe, you know, upfront buy a lot of technology, you'd be surprised. Um, you know, I have folks that have used QuickBooks Desktop for years and, and they actually have a whole IT salary. So they pay somebody, you know, eighty to $100,000 a year just to keep that stuff up to date and working. That's a lot of money compared to a monthly fee of what QBO can charge or what QBO does charge, right? So just something to think about, right? This is just, just food for thought. Um, minimal system resources um, and, you know, you don't have to pay to upgrade. There will be a different fee, but you don't have to be charged for that. You can cancel at any time with QBO um, and it integrates with, uh, with open API integrations like Katana and it makes it super easy. We built this ecosystem online on purpose this way to allow folks like Katana to be able to, you know, utilize their niche and make QuickBooks Online even better for those that need that manufacturing um, aspect, right, with QuickBooks Online. Yeah, totally. And, um, you know, being in the ERP space for 
for uh, quite a few years. I remember when you know we would have a new customer come on board, the actual implementation time usually was around six months. And the first three months was actually just getting the software onto the server. Now in the cloud, you literally start your subscription, you're, you're up and running on the software. So you've really uh, eliminated a huge amount of cost and time in actually getting the system uh, implemented and up to speed. And then not to mention, if you're looking at uh, a larger ERP system, there's a lot of functionality that you're going to adopt with that tool that you won't use. Um, because an on-premise solution usually needs to have much more involved to service their clients. It's harder to integrate to other packages. And so when you think of QuickBooks Online and going more for this best of breed technology and adopting the cloud, that allows the actual customer to utilize the, the technology specifically suited best for their business. So it allows them to tailor make their technology stack to what their business actually needs to continue to scale and grow. Yeah. Throw it to the next slide here. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I appreciate it, Sean. I was trying to find the little button. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still getting used to live storm, but I'll be an expert by the time we're done with the, today's webinar and I'll probably. <laughs> sounds sounds good learning on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, uh, just to kind of, just to kind of hit the nail on the head, look, I'm, I'm going to be completely transparent with y'all. I, I know QuickBooks online isn't always a good fit for everybody, but I'm here to tell you today that it's a good fit for more people than you think. Um, because we have this ecosystem built out and there is usually an answer for uh, any type of question or, or obstacle um, or, you know, efficiency issue uh, that we can try to tackle those. Again, I'm not saying every single one of them is a hit. You know, there are aspects where, you know, folks do need to stay on QuickBooks desktop, but they're very rare and they're very specific to that business. It's not something you could just blanket across the board. So just kind of wanted to get that out there. The other thing is, is um, we utilize the power of the ecosystem. So kind of like how I said earlier, we did this on purpose in online. We wanted to allow folks, third parties like Katana, to be able to integrate with our tool. So we have, at the end of the day, we have QuickBooks Online as the core of the accounting reporting but we utilize additional uh, apps within your ecosystem, whether they're Intuit branded, right? The payroll, the payments, QuickBooks time, those are all Intuit branded. And then on the outside, you've got, you know, inventory apps like Katana and a plethora of other type things, right? Expense management, if it's needed. Maybe you need additional sales tax, uh, you know, calculations and things like that. QuickBooks Online can only do so much, right? I think of it as like QuickBooks Online is, is good at like basic level type things. Um, and so we kind of made like some feature functionality basic across the board so that we could allow for these niche type companies to come in and say, hey, let me help you with this specific industry, workflow, automation, whatever it is, right, that, that you need. Um, and there's a lot of benefits to that. But at the end of the day, you know, the, the information Katana has, you know, would come into QBO so that your reporting is still accurate. But ultimately, and Sean, you can tell me if I'm wrong, inventory is managed through Katana. So you'll have them and they'll talk to each other and, and everything will work out. Um, biggest thing I would say is, is I have a lot of folks who tell me, well, I don't want to use apps. My next question to you would be is, do you have a smartphone? Because we use apps every day. And I would say on average, uh, a human being has about 15 to 20 apps on their phone alone for financial type related stuff. So Credit Karma, Experian, my Chase checking, my credit cards, uh, Credit Karma, all those things. Um, they are in service to making sure that, A, I pay my bills on time <laughs> and my credit score doesn't go to crap. So it's, um, it's definitely a new mindset, especially for those that have been working in a QuickBooks desktop environment. Definitely different mindset. Um, but we're just here to kind of open up the conversation and, and, and have that talk. Uh, but we did this on purpose. I promise it wasn't, a, it wasn't an accident. <laughs> yeah, sounds great. And I think you know, Katana's approach is very similar cloud-based solution, you know, with an open API, uh, we have a direct integration into QuickBooks Online, and we're utilizing the ecosystem to help our clients find the best technology stack to help them grow their business. So very yeah. similar approach. Um, so that's why I think we're going to and have a great partnership. So transitioning here into what are some of the challenges manufacturers are facing today? 
So right now, uh, in an on-premise environment, often manufacturers are working with multiple systems that don't communicate. So they have these information silos. So often you'll see uh, at a manufacturing facility, the floor is basically uh, worn out from the production manager's office because people have to walk physically to that office to see what's actually going on in production. Can they get orders out on time? Can they take on this new sales order? So the physical communication that is required in order to actually run the business is extremely inefficient because the production manager has some Excel sheet that he's working off of that he keeps his inventory and, and the jobs on the shop floor and check on. You have your maybe salespeople that are working off of a CRM system or probably more likely an Excel document. And then you have the financial system and none of these things are connected. So it creates a very inefficient communication strategy. And at the end of the day, what that leads to is outdated and incomplete data. So these individuals are making business decisions without the entire picture. So they can't make the best business decision because they actually don't have all the information at their fingertips. This leads to also multiple journal entries to try and keep that balance sheet uh, accurate and in check so they can make better financial decisions. They're not sure which jobs or customers are profitable because they don't have that visibility or detail into a job by job basis to understand how they're doing on an individual level. They can just see it usually on a monthly basis. Have we been profitable this month or not? Um, and then their year end audit is daunting. And I remember doing these inventory counts when I worked at that molding manufacturer because the, um, the product was 16 foot in length and we would have thousands, hundreds of thousands of feet of inventory. We would have to go out and count this inventory actually quarterly. And then we would have someone come in and audit the business. And all this was because we had major variance in our system and what actually was on hand in inventory. So it led to actually audits on, a, on a, a yearly basis. And then we had to do quarterly inventory counts. So that's a significant time and, and cost to the business. Um, inaccurate inventory leads to lower on time delivery and customer satisfaction. So if you don't know what you have in stock, it becomes more difficult to ensure that you have the inventory available to fulfill your customer's orders. And then unable to communicate sales order prioritization from um, your, your sales team uh, through to the shop floor. So how do your employees know what jobs they should be working on? Um, I remember how we used to do it when I worked at a manufacturing facility. It was organize the paper stacks of jobs that would go to the shop floor and shuffle them around based on what we thought was the priority. So you're literally shuffling paper and communicating to the shop floor that way. Um, so there's probably a better way. And these are challenges that manufacturers are faced with today in an on-premise environment. And so there are also some gaps. You know, I think a lot of businesses are open to moving to QuickBooks Online, but when they go and explore QuickBooks Online, they say, hey, what, but where am I gonna manage my inventory? You know, where am I going to uh, handle certain aspects of my business um, in, in the solution if it's not there currently? And it's really just a conceptual change. It's utilizing uh, other online technologies that integrate with QBO, to allow that to allow that product to uh, improve and, and, and scale their business. Um, and so within QBO right now, it doesn't have advanced inventory management. There isn't sales order functionality. You aren't able to do partial invoicing. Unit of measure conversions are a challenge. And these are things that by adding solutions into the QBO tech stack, you enable that functionality to be available to your business and can move to the cloud quite seamlessly and actually extend out the functionality that you currently have in an on-premise solution. And so that's where you start to adopt these best of breed technologies that are specialized for your business that'll actually make your life much easier at the end of the day. So how do businesses scale using cloud manufacturing? So, you know, they would do that utilizing something like QBO as their financial solution and Katana. And what that enables is a direct integration from your shop floor, what's happening on the shop floor from a cost and inventory perspective, connected directly to your financial solution in QuickBooks Online, reducing the number of journal entries so that we can automate those journal entries and have a more accurate balance sheet uh, on a continual basis. And then dashboards and, re and reports that are based on real-time information um, so that your business and your business decisions are made on complete uh, information that's happening in real time and you're not making this decision based on reports that 
were gathered from information that happened maybe a week or even last month. Um, and then clear visibility into the business. So what is our profit today by individual customer? What is our inventory at? How many turns have we done this year? What's our production look like? And, and how many jobs do we have open in production? What's our schedule look like? These are things that you need to see in real time. And that's something that Katana can provide you. And then the ability, and I think this is a huge uh, advantage, to prioritize the sales orders so that when you prioritize drag and drop those sales orders to the right order that you want them to be operated in, that will not only dynamically allocate inventory to the highest priority jobs, it'll also communicate to the employees on the shop floor what jobs they should be working on by prioritizing the tasks associated to them. So it's this real-time communication throughout the entire organization. So you have these micro decisions that become much more uh, efficient as well as macro de uh, decisions that the owner's making that are much more clear and include um, an all-inclusive picture of what's going on at the business. So what does a typical customer look like uh, at QBO uh, and, and that's utilizing Katana? Um, so companies that might consider looking at uh, Katana with QBO is maybe they're on QuickBooks desktop and they want to migrate to QBO, but it, they require some more advanced inventory functionality. So there's some really strong inventory functionality that's included with Katana, such as bills of material capabilities, as well as production through the shop floor. Manufacturers with raw material who produce finished goods. So as simple as that, they have you know, a bill of material and they need to make finished goods. Um, that's something that would be difficult in QuickBooks Online, but if you add Katana to that technology stack, it becomes much easier. Companies that actually have outsourced manufacturing. So maybe they own the inventory, they're shipping it out to an outsourced manufacturer, another company that's actually going to produce the finished goods and then either ship those directly or bring those back to your facility and you can ship them out. And then companies between five and 50 employees with a, a revenue approxim approximately between one and $10 million in annual revenue. Some of the industries that we find have success with Katana and QuickBooks Online are furniture, food and beverage companies as we have batch tracking capabilities, cosmetics, but overall we're kind of industry agnostic. It's companies that often sell through uh, multiple sales channels such as Shopify, maybe point of sale, um, and that they are looking for a solution that can uh, operate in the cloud and help them run their business more effectively. So here's an example of a, a customer that's been utilizing Katana for quite some time, and they saw significant improvements to their business in connecting QuickBooks Online to Katana. So Katama, um, they manufacture these beautiful hanging um, uh, chairs, and they're really more of a, a piece of art than they are uh, furniture when you look at them. Uh, and and they're, they're, they're really neat. And one of the challenges that they had was actually the amount of inventory that they were carrying. They really just had a really hard time understanding demand connected to the amount of inventory they should, ha should have in house. And they were able to improve their inventory management efficiency by 80%. And so, so they saw that uh, connection between uh, visibility into production and their bill of material and inventory allowed them to reduce the amount of inventory they were carrying on hand. So it allowed them to much more effectively align the inventory they were carrying to um, the demand that they had from customers. And a huge part of their decision was finding a solution that integrated with QuickBooks Online. So this allowed them to keep their sales, production, and accounting all in sync in one solution. And Richie Duncan had a nice uh, quote here, with Katana and QuickBooks Online, we can more effectively see and follow inventory levels and have recipes and bills of material for our manufacturing products that let us follow the manufacturing status throughout the entire production cycle. I just went onto their website and man, yeah. these are beautiful. <laughs> they're they're kind of neat. So it's like uh, this big <laughs> overarching hanging thing and it's almost like a nest. And I think yeah. his idea, his idea was like uh, he was traveling and, and had seen um, something while he was traveling in Indonesia or something along those lines that inspired him to design uh, the chair. And so it's, it's a pretty Super cool. Uh, nosy. <laughs> I wanted to know who that was. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So how does Katana actually integrate with QuickBooks Online? And so there's two options. One, you can just integrate from a sales order to an invoice. The other is, uh, um, and, and along with that more simple integration, you can also integrate a purchase order into a bill. 
Um, so that's a more direct integration. You would actually have to do a few journal entries to keep your balance sheet in check and typically would do those at the end of the month. Our more advanced integration uh, on top of the sales order to invoice and creating the uh, AR journal entry and on the purchase side, um, creating your bill and your AP journal entry, we'll also do an inventory uh, journal entry that will increase your inventory when you create a purchase order. And when you have a sales order, it will decrease your inventory based on the cost of goods sold of that um, of the sales items on your sales order and increase your cost of goods sold relative to that as well. So it's going to automatically perform those journal entries. So why don't we take a look at the actual product in Katana? We can talk through some of the highlights of the solution and then we can open it up for some Q&A. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. All right. Is that coming coming through okay for you, Leah? Yep, I can see you just fine. All right, perfect. All right, so this is the uh, sales order screen in Katana. You'll notice that we're currently operating just in Google Chrome. So all the fun functionality that you have in your browsers comes along for the ride. So you can save screens, you can use forward and backward functionality um, like you're used to, to navigate easily between different things, as well as opening up multiple tabs on your computer make it more easily uh, easy to work with. Along the uh, front here, we can see all these sales orders that come in. And one of the benefits of Katana is we can pull, like I had said, sales orders from multiple sales channels. So you could have orders from Shopify, you can manually be putting in orders. You may even also have a point of sale store that you're putting in sales orders through the system. So all these orders are populated in here. And right away, I have that real time visibility into my inventory to let me know what I can actually fulfill. So when we look at these sales orders, for example, if I check out sales order number two, I can see that I am expecting to complete or have the inventory available to ship out this order today. I currently have all the ingredients in stock that I need to manufacture this order, and it's currently being worked on. So it's a work in progress right now. So it's on the shop floor. If I actually click into this sales order here, we can see specifically we have three line items on this sales order that were ordered by the customer. And I can see two of these line items are actually in stock. So we're ready to actually ship that out. I do have the ability to go and partially ship this order and partially invoice it based on what I have available to ship out today. But I can also go in and check out, hey, maybe this order is close to being completed. I can go and dive right into the manufacturing order from here, see what stage it's at in the process, and maybe uh, communicate to the shop floor that we need to get this job done. So we have assembly and packaging that currently needs to be worked on. And we can see that assembly is currently being worked on by Sean. So I can go yell out to Sean, hey, Sean, how are you doing on that job? Are you close to being done? Sean also is seeing that this is a high priority job. So he can actually look at his task list out on the shop floor. So this could be run on a, an iPhone or any sort of device actually that has connection to the internet. And he can see the prioritization of jobs that he needs to work on on the shop floor. And we can see that sales order number two is here and he can actually go and hit start and log on to that job. Uh, he can finish the job and that's gonna communicate to our system that that step has now been completed. So we can see now that this job is pro uh, progressing through production. We've completed that step in real time and I can actually just go manually complete this final step. So now that the manufacturing order is completed. We can see back on our sales screen that sales order two, all the sales items are in stock. The ingredients um, are all here. The production job is processed and I can now go and ship this product out. So I'll go ship and deliver all. So this will ship our product out to our customer. Now we can actually go over and invoice the product. So I have sales order number two here. It's showing that it's not invoiced currently. I can go in here and create the invoice for this, uh, for this sales order. And so this is gonna go ahead and create the invoice over in QuickBooks Online. So it's now created that invoice and I can go and see what that invoice looks like. Oh, it logged me out of QuickBooks, I waited too long. Oh no. <laughs> 
All right, and this is our name of our company, Chairs R Us. So I manufacture chairs. And just so it to show you that it does take us directly to the transaction, I'm going to go ahead here, show you that once I click on that invoice, it takes me into QuickBooks and it opens up that transaction directly within the solution. So now I can see all the line items that were on that sales order. I can see the customer, the email address, uh, the terms, the invoice date, the due date, all coming forward nice and uh, neatly into QuickBooks Online. I can even go and take a look at, uh, if I wanted to, the transactional journal that's related to this. So in this case, it'll just show um, the account receivable and then the different uh, sales items that are making up that, uh, that um, journal entry related to this uh, invoice. If you wanted to get into more detail and take a look at how did that affect inventory, you could go and take a look at your uh, chart of accounts and we could see uh, if that hit our inventory as well. So if we look at our inventory assets, we can see in our view register that we have a new journal entry for sales order number two and it decreased um, our inventory by $2,274. And the other side of that would have been increasing our cost of goods sold relative to that journal entry. So we have a nice clean integration between QuickBooks Online uh, and Katana that allows you to keep your balance sheet in check with regards to inventory um, and create the invoices automatically and operate your financial system separate from your operational system, but keep them in check um, through that integration. Wow, that's nice. All right, cool. <laughs> so I will stop sharing my screen here and I'll find the button here in a second. <laughs> Disable screen share, there we go. And pop this open for a second. We did our demo. Just before we open it up to q and I'm sure there's probably some questions in the chat here. If anyone is interested in our partnership program, you can go ahead and scan this QR code with your phone. That'll take you to our partnership program page. You can go ahead and book a meeting with us directly if you'd like, or you can sign up to the program there if you're interested. We've got a pretty cool program and we have a, uh, our next webinar is going to be a deeper dive into Katana and QuickBooks Online. Uh, so we have a webinar coming up in a, in a few weeks about that. Feel free to sign up for it. So Leah, I appreciate you uh, doing the presentation with me and now we'll open it up to Q&A. <clears throat> I was looking at some of the questions and um, I kind of wanted to just make sure we were on the same page. So I know QuickBooks Desktop has um, average cost and QuickBooks Online does FIFO. Um, how does Katana combat that um, with QBO and Katana together um, if they don't want to move per IRS so, regulations? So um, great question. I'm not sure about the IRS regulations specifically, but uh, I have a decent understanding of how the integration works from that perspective. So the um, costing in Katana, it, we're utilizing moving average cost. So the cost of your finished goods that are uh, moving over to um, uh, QuickBooks Online is it is calculated out by the moving average cost of the inventory that you currently have at your facility. So it's averaging out the value of that inventory based on what you have at your facility. So that would be the cost of goods sold um, uh, that's brought over into QuickBooks Online would be relative to the moving average cost of that particular item. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, let me see. I know we had somebody um, asking about um, they're an accountant for Heritage Metalwork, and they just switched from QBO to QBO from Oat Street and QuickBooks Desktop. They're looking for software to integrate with QBO to track inventory, and we're wondering if you guys would be a good fit. It sounds like it. I mean, um, but it, usually the the devil's in the details, right? Um, not every customer that's moving from QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Online is going to be a good fit for Katana. But it's definitely something that we should consider. And that's one of the nice things about our partnership program is we do want to educate um, the accountants and bookkeepers that we work with to help them explain what a good fit client looks like and why Katana could be a tool that would 
help their client uh, manage their inventory more effectively. So based on the challenges that they're faced with, I think Katana would be something that would make sense to consider and certainly book a meeting with us and we'll talk through the client in a bit more detail. Yeah, I think that's kind of the same sentiment we have with QBO. If you're trying to migrate from like a desktop, QuickBooks desktop product to online, right? You always want to ask the devils in the details, right? And then everybody's going to be different. Um, there is no one size fits all really. And those uh, day in the life of, I know it used to drive me crazy when people would say that, but it's true. You know, you would ask like, okay, what do you do on a daily basis? And right. if you walk through those steps, we as the experts can come in and say, oh, that's, advanced inventory, you're going to need a little bit more of a boost with QEO, like a Katana to get you guys started and things like that. So can totally relate to you on that side um, from a QBO perspective too. Awesome. Yeah, I think uh, that's a great point. So that was the, I think you answered William Murphy's question about uh, average cost in FIFO, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then, okay. And then Gary Yeager. The hosting would not some apps to run their business. So we had to switch to a server. So I'm not sure, uh, Gary, if that issue would persist. Um, it looks like someone's trying to answer that. Uh, Daniel, what apps were you not able to use? Uh, <laughs> someone's commenting on the dog. Um, oh. so I, <laughs> cute, very cute pooch. Appreciate it, William. <laughs> Um, and, and uh, Gary, I, I would uh, invite you to, uh, to reach out to us. Um, uh, we'll, we'll put up that QR code at the end of the meeting and you can book a call with our partnership team. We can dive into some of the details and see if there's um, what apps you're, you're speaking about specifically and try and answer it to, uh, for you. Um, it was Connect's ShipStation, I think. Um, so we do work with ShipStation. Um, so potentially, uh, I'm not too familiar with Connect's though, so we'd probably need to understand a bit more uh, about that. And then David, who's been a partner with us for a while, QuickBooks Desktop is an app location. I like that. <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> it's true. Uh, <laughs> yep. Okay. That, that's a great point, right? From the comments around, uh, it is just another app, right, that you're running your business on. Um, Kale Tom, uh, Thompson, I'm a QBO pro advisor. I started with Intuit. It's funny. This was the heritage one. I just uh, okay. Talked to. Yeah. Okay. Very <laughs> cool. Yeah. Would love to, I mean, Metalworks, it, it sounds like um, we could work with them. I spent a lot of time in that industry myself. So we'd be happy to talk through what the requirements are. Uh, Dale. And then we had Mario, Leah, what is the process mechanism for a QSP to get revenue credit for QBO sales leads brought to Katana when Katana sells their solution plus QBO as a bundle? That is a great question. I don't actually know. Um, that would probably be a question to ask your account manager. Okay, great. We can, we can table that one. And Mario, we can talk through what the solution is there. Um, Cause I definitely think that's something we'll have to, we'll have to figure out um, where and how we, we, we find the best solution at the end of the day for the client. Uh, but yeah. make sure that um, our relationship, Mario, uh, as a QSP uh, and and us as the ISV QSP, how that kind of works together. So many acronyms, but yeah, I know both exactly. Guys, you know, like I was like, oh, that's a great question. I actually don't know. I'm so sorry, but we'll definitely yeah. get you an answer. I promise. Yeah. Thanks. Awesome. Um, yeah, we'll get back to you, Mario. And. Uh, questions. Oh, he booked a meeting and then there's a question section. I'm just going to jump over there. No, no one put questions in the question section. We will receive we a recording for so this. Good. Sean, we didn't <laughs> need to answer any questions. There we go. And I think there was just a, sorry, there was just one more. Uh, they're, they're asking, will they get a recording of the webinar? Uh, they missed the beginning. So yes, if you had registered, you will have access to the webinar. Um, so you will, you will have uh, access to the recording uh, and can review it at your own time. What about the slides? Uh, the slides we can make available too. I don't think there's anything uh, we would want to hide there. I think there's some good uh, information on it. So happy to share that as well. Absolutely. Yeah, we can make that available. We would okay. need, I think everyone provided their email addresses so we can email them out. That sounds great. Well, Leah, it's been wonderful. I'm glad your dog could make an appearance. 
<laughs> I was not expecting that. Uh, I don't think I saw her sneak in. So um, <laughs> thanks for having me again. And, and honestly, I really love the collaboration between, you know, your customers helping each other out. I mean, and honestly, that's that's kind of part of it, right? Is, you know, sharing the wealth of information that we have for all of us to be successful. So um, love it. It was a pleasure to be here. And um, I hope to see some of these names around some more. Thanks so much, Leah. And there's the QR code. If you do want to uh, schedule a meeting with us, you can just scan that and uh, book a call. Leah, it's been wonderful chatting with you. Look forward to doing the next one. Have a great day. Sounds good. Take care. Bye, everyone.